Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Thentifaxis record, Sacred White Noise. These guys are a Toronto black metal trio, and they are dropping their full-length debut this month following up an EP they put out several years ago through Dark Descent Records, which this record is also coming out through. Their EP unfortunately did slip by me, however, this record and the first song off of this thing, the first song to drop, the first song to open, <laughs> This record up did not. The title of this thing, The Bright White Nothing at the End of the Tunnel. <laughs> Clearly this band does not take making statements lightly. This song title is, is weighty with verbiage and, and message too, uh, I guess sort of proposing that maybe when we're facing death uh, at the end, uh, there is nothing. Even the title of this record seems like an incredibly poetic tribute to the art of black metal in that the guitars sound so brittle and so distorted like a wall of white noise and how the fanaticism surrounding this occult subgenre of metal is almost religious in a way. However, it, it was not just this band's uh, way with words and album titles as well as their incredibly difficult name and this stark black and white depressing album cover that caught my attention. It was also their uh, sound. Who'd have thought sound would actually make someone want to listen to an album? The bright white nothing on this track, the opener to this LP, as I've said, opens up with these manic organs just creating this cacophonous dissonance. And uh, man, it's just soaked in this really wide panoramic reverb that isn't too much, but it just feels uh, natural in a way. It feels like I'm listening to this band perform at the altar of some kind of blackened cathedral. But also, aside from these organs, there are also these winding guitar leads that are just really bright, really sharp. And once the rest of the instrumentation kicks in, it's just hard for me not to contain my excitement for the fact that this track is recorded and produced. <laughs> fantastically. Every bass drum pummels, every cymbal is clear as a bell, the snares just crack through the mix, the guitars are really bright again as I said, burning, searing, fiery. And what's even nicer is the bass is incredibly present on this record. Bass not really a major player traditionally in black metal records. Typically it's something that thickens up the mix a little bit if it's even there, but here it's actually playing a pretty significant role. The vocals on this record are animalistic. They have a range of, I guess, screamed <laughs> pitches. They're not quite the high-pitched wretches that you would expect from a classic black metal record. There are some guttural lows on this thing that I think death metal fans would appreciate, as well as just the overall heaviness of the record. Along with the really precise performances on all of these tracks too, this band is incredibly tight. There is electricity, there is momentum to the way that they play together, and the sound that they create is just this stark, sick, ferocious and tortured sonic palette. And aside from the sound and the performances, there is another thing that makes this record stick out, and that is the band, the way they write their tracks, for the genre anyway. It's pretty progressive. I wouldn't say it's incredibly flashy or technical or really, really indebted to the old school of prog rock in the same way that Murmur record I loved earlier this year was with their very obvious King Crimson influences. But Thantifaxath does get pretty adventurous with their song structures. They don't mind multifaceted songs. They don't mind tracks that just kind of shift pace. Like on the opening track here that has, like I said, this dizzying angular guitar lead that is played over these drums that are constantly shifting back and forth between these busy fills and really intense blast beats. Then all of a sudden the band segues into these really loud, quickly strummed guitar chords. There's this fantastic guitar passage in the middle of the track that has all these guitar leads in the left channel just building up and up and up intensity tension while all these guitar leads in the right channel are careening downward. It really just <laughs> screws with my head and occasionally there are these keyboards adding a, a little bit of thickness to the track and just even more dissonance. It's it's insanity. The band really knows how to keep a song exciting from start to finish. The band exemplifies this again on the 11 minute closer here. It's the longest song on this LP as well. The same string sounds that play out on the first track here 
play a larger role in the very bleak, depressing intro that kicks this thing off. It's a really haunting introduction, and these same strings play into some really great tremolo pick guitar melodies on this thing, and also back up some spots where... Uh, you're getting these really weird, dissonant wails of strings. It sounds like blood dripping down a wall in a horror movie. There are moments on the song as well where the band is just hammering on these pummeling riffs and the entire song kicks off with just uh, <laughs> this very sharp wall of white noise. Hmm. Sacred, white, noise. Again, these are multifaceted songs, but it's not like they're so dense and the band fills these tracks up in a really gimmicky way with so many ideas that the songs lose focus. Every shift, every change in direction that the band makes feels really coherent. The flow of these songs, I think, is really good. I think the only downside to the way that the band writes and performs some of these tracks is that the subtle details of the way that they write these songs, and their performances as well, uh, does tend to get overshadowed in just the... But maybe for you this is something that you'll dig up and, and, and acclimate yourself to a little bit more with a few more listens. Now, I do think this record also brings some decent diversity to the table, like Eternally Falling, which is a bit of an interlude track in the middle of the entire LP, with these really cavernous, lonesome melodies calling out very slowly, moving monolithically, just up until the point where at the very end, drums, bass kick in, and you get these really slow, brooding riffs that transition into the next track, pretty nicely. While I do think that this song does drag on a little bit, I love that this band can present a blunt and aggressive side as well as a very slow and subtle side pretty well. And the song Where I End and the Hemlock Begins is one of the, I guess, <laughs> comparatively one of the more glacial tracks on the entire LP with just how slowly the chord progression is moving and spiraling downward. Definitely one of the moodier songs on the record and the bass lines occurring behind these chords are actually pretty angular, just jumping all over the place. Later, there are some really anthemic guitar solos on this track that feel like the melodies that they're playing are really archaic, and then some guitar passages that feel like they were pulled straight out of like a, a Maha Vishnu record. There are a few other very high velocity songs on this record as well that also bring many highlights, but they are really intense as well, and like the other songs here will require some attentive listening to really pull apart. This record basically functions on six tracks that are spread out across 44 minutes, so it's not too long of an album and we don't have too many songs on here either. It's not like we have a bunch of tracks that feel like they are cut short or anything like that. The songs on here are meaty. All of them leave me full. I don't feel like I'm left wanting more. The record isn't so long that I would call it ambitious or anything like that. It's just diverse enough to cover all the bases it needs to on its 44 minute runtime. So while there are some really impressive elements to Sacred White Noise, in some regards I do think this record does just enough. There's a lot of experimentation going on right now in black metal, and uh, Thanti Faxoth is, is obviously far from being the most experimental, but still, they pulled together a really, really great, exciting record. Not necessarily exciting in terms of uh, the ideas they bring to the table, though I do think these guys are, are pretty far from just being a strictly traditional black metal outfit, but more exciting in that the songs are written really well, the riffs are great, and the playing is fantastic, the recording is just top freaking notch. I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this record. Tran, Zishin, if you've given this LP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Sacred White Noise, Anthony Fantano, forever.